This Big Ten East College Football Win Totals edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Bet ten dollars at WinBet and get two hundred dollars in free bets. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. Download the WinBet app now. Or visit winnbet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by Coors Light. Get Mountain Cold refreshment delivered straight to your door via Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com/sgp. That's CoorsLight.com/sgp. We're also brought to you by Stable Duel. Stable Duel is a horse racing DFS app where you can play free and paid games for real cash prizes. You can win as much as forty thousand dollars with one entry. Head over to StableDuel.com to get started today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap, America's marketplace to buy and sell sports bets. Use promo code SGP on your first deposit to receive up to five hundred dollars in bonus cash. Head over to PropSwap.com or download the PropSwap app today. And of course, make sure to download the SGPN app. Your home for all of our free picks and podcasts. This is Nate Collins. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Fired up that there's no audio. I had the same problem. Really? Yes. Colby Col had the same problem last night. Yeah. I've, I I've hit refresh on the thing. It still looks good to me here. So I'm assuming we're good. Uh, there's no audio. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, now now the audio is working as it's bleeding into my own screen. Oh man! All right. So we we sorted that out. Yes, Ryan had his uh, finger on some sort of button. We are going to talk <laughs> Big Ten East college win totals. They're not officially out. We are using our own projections on uh, what the win total may be. And uh, when they do pop out, you're going to want to head over to winbet.com and get down on these Big uh, Ten East college win totals. A bit win bet, man. It has been great uh, out here in Colorado. Firing on a win bet all the time, spinning that parlay wheel, getting the nice little boost, getting entered into some sweet sweepstakes. Of course, they have the bet ten dollars, a win two hundred dollar promotion, a hundred percent deposit bonus on the casino, up to one thousand dollars, and the build your own bet feature. Just uh, tweeted out one involving Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks tonight. Uh, I think I got it at 
like eight to one. So let it ride, baby. Download the WinBet app now or visit WINNBet.com to get started today. Offer subject to change, terms and conditions at WinBet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in the state where playthrough WinBet is available. If you or somebody you know has a gambling problem, call 1 800 522 4700. Before we actually get to the win totals, it is time for this week's edition of Real Men of DGENs, brought to you by PropSwap.com. Promo code SGP, where America goes to buy and sell real sports bets. Kramer, please, the music. SGPN presents <laughs> Real Men of DGENs. Real Men of DGENs. We salute you. John Daly the second. That's right. The son of PGA pro John Daly is Hooters first NIL ambassador quote. I have seen my father's great relationship with Hooters over the years, and I am proud to continue my family's association with this iconic brand. So mm-hmm. congrats to you, John Daly. The second we salute you. And, and I've seen his great relationship with Hooters, uh, his dad's. Uh, I, I was going to say know, firsthand. Is he talking about his mother's <laughs> Hooters, or is he just referring to Hooters in, in the general sense? What I, an awkward statement! Someone wrote that, like a professional, like PR person wrote that statement, and I, didn't realize how hilarious it sounds. I've told you guys this story before. It was Beach Week, like 2002 or three. We're in Daytona Beach, Florida, me and a bunch of ECU guys, and uh, and we were pretty hungover. We go, you know, next to the hotel happens to be a Hooters. Oh, perfect. Let's go in there and have some wings, some grease and some beers. We go in there. I have no idea who this person is. He's got sunglasses (laughs) on. I can clearly see he's had a a decent amount of cocktails and he's bothering each table. He's (laughs) sitting at a table by himself, but he gets up and he's bothering each table. And then eventually he gets to our table and he goes, dude, or guys, you know, would you like to, uh, if you want to take a photo with me, it's 25 bucks. If not, I can sign. uh, I have some (laughs) golf gloves and golf balls and you can, I can sign these and I forget the price, but I'm saying long. Yeah. We, we, we basically said no. And then, uh, and then, you know, the waitress comes by after he leaves and says that that fucking asshole's here every day. (laughs) (laughs) I I mean, the John Daly stories are endless. Like, I think it was one of the, it, it was one of the U S opens where he like, Instead of doing the normal thing, he took his practice rounds at the local local Indian <laughs> casino, who comped him a bunch. So like John Daly, national treasure. Hey, he was uh, he was he was. I didn't think he was an asshole. I thought he was friendly. Guy had a few drinks. <laughs> what, wanted to make a few extra bucks. You could argue it's America, right? You could argue John <laughs> Daly's one of the greatest American athletes of all time. For him to do what he did <laughs> in the shape he did it. I mean, big college football fan too. He still to this day, you'll see on social media him popping up hitting a, a ball 300 yards down the fairway off a beer can. Yeah. That is not something anyone walking off a bus can do. So, if his son has half the talent, I I'll be honest guys, I've been waiting for 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 us to get a deal with Hooters so I can do the same thing, you know? Delightfully well, let's well, do this. Delightfully tacky yet unrefined. I don't know. Maybe uh maybe dump it on their uh, brand ambassador. Not the best way to get a deal from Hooters. <laughs> well, I mean, Patty C. Well, yeah, we should just send Patty C over there. I'm sure he could schmooze things over. He's got uh, a nice. I mean, they know him on a first name basis, right? Well, <laughs> if if we send Patty C as like and said he was John Daly the second and sent him to Hooters, would anyone would anyone notice the difference? No, well, no. I, I, honestly, though, it's it's worth. Uh, and I think I retweeted it from our handle at Gambling Podcast. You have to take a look at John Daly the second because his face it looks exactly like his dad. It is it is. Crazy well, how how much he looks like him. Did you retweet the original uh, the picture that was just zoomed in on him, or did you get the one that has his dad too? I I retweeted the one just with him zoomed oh, all in. All right, I'll make sure I retweet the the one with him uh, and his dad because holy holy Toledo, his Santa Claus. If, if, he needs to just be Santa Claus going forward. Oh, uh, yeah. John Daly he looks like Santa. Claus. The beard it's he's crazy. rocking right now. I mean. He he's got so much drip. His son got an NIL deal with Hooters. That's how much drip John Daly has. Uh, he's the man. Hooters used to have a arena football team, believe it or not, back in the day. They need they they need to get in on this uh, USFL action. I feel like Hooters kind of screwed the pooch. They were they were so out of out of ahead of the competition. Now we got a whole bunch of wing houses. All right. 
Let's move on to college football. Let's do it. Sean, um, go ahead. What were you going to say, Ron? I was going to ask you the the question I always ask you, which is do we start with the team with the most wins or the le- least? And you start tell at me the bottom. You tell me you like it from the bottom to the top. I did you need to say anything now or is nope, that what you're going to say? Good to go. All right. Rutgers, Pride of New Jersey, 3. 3 wins. <clears throat> That's pretty disrespectful. 500 to 1 to win the national championship. That's actually better than a, a number of uh, at least one team in the SEC. So perhaps uh the SEC isn't the the uh, the greatest con- conference in the land. I don't know. I mean they overperformed last year. Greg Schiano, but he always overperforms. Colby, what what's the what's the initial reaction to this one? I mean, I would take I mean, first reaction is take the over. Shiano's in year three. Now I look back at his first stint at Rutgers. Now it did take him to year five. As if it's a prison. It took him year five. Uh, you know, he was two and nine back in two thousand one, then one and eleven, five and seven year three, which he just went five and eight in, in year two in this stint. Um but I, I think you gotta go over because he's a good football coach and he's been recruiting at a pretty decent level for Rutgers. Um, you look at the schedule. Now I will say this, they have the most away games out of everyone in the big 10 East. Isn't that ironic? Um, oh boy. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, but, but at the same time, I think they can beat Wagner and I think they will beat Wagner and temple. I think that Boston college game I'd favor BC, but it wouldn't shock me if Rutgers upset them. I was, I was a different team on the road. Iowa is is great at home, so I think that game in Piscataway on September twenty fourth. I mean, I would favor Iowa, but it wouldn't shock me if Rutgers won that. Also, they get a bye week before hosting Indiana. Mm. That's a winnable, it's a very game. winnable game. And then they're at Maryland end of the year. Wouldn't surprise me if they beat Maryland. You guys know Fade Loxley. Mm. I'm all over Rutgers over three. I mean, again, Shiano's like a good coach. I know their I know their roster isn't going to be amazing, but they they won five games last year. They won five games with their defense allowing six and a half yards per play in conference. They only scored thirteen point seven points per game last season. So to get five wins out of that kind of production, to me, that's that's impressive, and that's why Shiano is great because he's going to grind out. A couple wins that they have no business winning, and you know what? what didn't they? They hung around with Penn State last year, didn't they? Or am I confusing no, that no, with no, a different? No, no, no. It was Michigan. They almost Michigan, beat Michigan right. in Ann, in Ann Arbor. It was twenty to thirteen, only a seven point loss on the road. Um, the offense was was dreadful, but they have a high. They had a freshman last year that was a pretty big recruit. They started to play him a little bit towards the end of the year. We'll see how it works out this year. But they've also, I thought, did pretty well in the transfer portal. Are they favored against Temple? Yes, they'll be they'll be favored against Temple and Wagner. Uh, will they be favored anywhere else? Potentially Indiana. Potentially Indiana. That's a tricky yeah. one because you're kind of like if a team's only favored in three games and they're supposed to win. Like I get the Shiano's going to overperform, going to steal a game somewhere, which is why I'll, I'll lean over because I do I do think they're two and zero, oh, and I think you just need one to to get the put to the push. Now it, it does seem like it's going to be. Like this is a push line. It, I don't know where the four wins are. No, I told you. I think it's they gotta can get a, someone. Like I, Iowa struggles on the road. I agree. They're gonna have yeah. to like steal Maryland uh, on yeah. the road. That's or, not even that much of a steal either. They yeah. could beat Maryland. All right. You know. Yeah, we well, can. Yeah, see. I, I think they're. I think they're gonna shock one of these teams, and I. Again, I think they really get up for that Penn State game. I don't know what the spread is. I would definitely probably take them on the spread. And you know, Penn State can mess up some in-conference road games. So I, I don't know. It, to me, the formula to get to three is pretty easy for Rutgers. They beat they beat Wagner, um, you know, and they uh, what was the other Wagner and then Temple. Those yeah. are two. I actually, locked. I mean, to Colby's point, I think they can start three and zero. Oh. I mean, you have Iowa yeah, at, at Boston home. College. Yeah. Well, no, oh, sorry, not the, not the Boston yeah. College. That, the that's Iowa a, that's game. still a winnable game. So you'd be like one. I, th- I no, would, no, but I listen, would say I would like BC what minus four catching Iowa. Oh, I I I don't think I'm not going to plan on them beating BC, but them taking on Iowa at home when Iowa has who on deck. Michigan, right? Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, and if you look at if you could just kind of take the collection right, we're of there. I Iowa at home, Nebraska at home, Indiana at home. There there's I feel like there's one win between those three yeah. games. We talked our, our way there. Easy over. Easy over on Rutgers. Right. Indiana, their their totals at four. All whole numbers in these projections. Uh slightly cowardice. But Indiana at four, 
four hundred to one is the total here. Uh, Indiana peaked as a program what two years ago during the pandemic. They they oh, it was uh, fool's gold. Yeah. The college football experience was all over that, <laughs> all over that being fool's gold. <laughs> yeah. They played like four games, and the Big Ten needed to prop Ohio. Yeah. I mean, the the masses needed to prop to, to prop Ohio State into the playoffs. You're right. So they're like, hey, they're top ten. No, no, they weren't. No. And Michael Penix is gone. He's now at Washington. They went out and got Connell Basilak, a quarterback from Missouri. We don't like him. I mean, twenty five hundred yards. I think they got worse at the quarterback yeah, position. We don't um, like the quarterback. Tom Allen, though, he's a solid defensive coach. But you look at this; they get two sets of back to back away games at Cincinnati, at Nebraska. I mean, look, say what you want about Nebraska; that place is still lit. That's a tough place to grab a win. That's an insane set. I yeah. mean, Cincinnati, and then, Nebraska, and then Ohio State, State Michigan, Michigan State, State later in the year. Brutal. Do you see what? See, you but see, also part of a three game stretch that sees you play Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan State, like or or how about the other three game stretch of at Cincinnati, at Nebraska, and home to Michigan? I don't know where they. Where, yeah. I don't, good luck finding five. Where, game, five and wins. even uh, Colby, what do you think about them at home against Western Kentucky? I I don't know. I mean, Western Kentucky getting Jared Deggy, a quarterback. Uh, I mean, obviously Bailey Zappi's going to the uh, would have loved the NFL. I mean, if, you have, if you have the continuity there, maybe. But, but I, I mean, Cincy being one of your non-conference games on the road. I mean, I think they could lose. To, honestly, the the only flat out win that I see that we could say they're definitely going to win is the Idaho Vandals in in a in a uh, regional battle as they take on the FCS I, Idaho Vandals. They'll you be know? favored in their first two games. Catch, catch the sarcasm. They'll be um, they'll be they'll be favored uh, against Maryland <laughs> and they'll be favored against Purdue, maybe? No. I don't I don't no. even know that they'll be favored against Maryland. Maryland went to a bowl last year. All right, so you know, six and six. Favored against so. Idaho, Western Kentucky, coin flip against Maryland. I, I think they could potentially be a favorite uh, against Illinois in the season opener, but I do think oh, Bielma, I Bielma that game, year yeah. two. I, All right, so I, I think Bill was a better coach. Three game, yeah. two games where they're favored, and two where it's going to be close favorite, maybe a toss up. That's only four games. I'm on the under. Colby. Are we? Yeah. Are we? D- is their defense get any better? Their defense allowed 35 points per game in conference last year. They are bringing back seven starters. No. Any hope for their defense to get a little better? I mean, I think he's a good defensive coach. I actually think the guy's a, a pretty decent coach. But you're at Indiana. You're in the Big Ten East. You're. It's. I think. That and the SEC West are the two toughest uh, divisions in all of football. Uh, Even with them getting better, I I think they got worse at the quarterback. I mean, actually, last year Penix was injured, so I mean, if in a way you could say if if Basilek's healthy, they'll be better this year at the quarterback position. But I I just think the rest of the Big Ten East is getting better. Yeah, Maryland's been landing five stars after five stars. Let's let's talk about it. Yeah, we're all locking in the under then for Indy. Yeah, it's it's tough if you look at that schedule, especially it's it's tough to make a case. I mean. Five and seven, you lose, but I I, I think that would be a great no, year I, for them. If they I, if they get to five, something's gone horribly right for them. Maryland, five wins, three hundred to one to win the national championship. Uh, to his little brother, back for another year. This Sean, w- Sean, we taking it out on the little brother. Fade locks. No, no, I, I kind of like the little brother. I mean, especially again, Tua's game is good for college, and and you know his little brother, I think. Coming back with the receiver, uh, Raheem Jarrett, I think that's pretty sweet. Their defense again uh, was pretty bad, but they're bringing back seven starters. So if they can just get the defense a little bit better, I know they have a new defensive coordinator, Brian Williams. So if the offense continues to progress and their defense just gets a little bit better, I think this team's at least six and six. And Colby seems pretty high in their recruiting class as well. So I really like Maryland over uh, five. Here's the thing: is that they recruited really well, but they've also been killed by the transfer portal. Yeah, some of those big time recruits from years past. Now he's still he's still recruiting at a high level, but they aren't they aren't sticking around. Some of these five stars are leaving, but uh, I mean, you're, you, you gotta like the, the the schedule's not that brutal out the gate. Now it is brutal. That, like your final three three of your final four games, there's a three week stretch where you're at Wisconsin, at Penn State, and home to Ohio State. That is brutal. That's tough. Um, I still lean under as much as much as I see an experienced offense, and and you know they made me eat my words last year. But I think okay, I think they'll beat Buffalo. I think they'll beat Charlotte. But that game's at Charlotte. It wouldn't shock me. And then SMU, Rhett Lashley, that program's I thought really won the transfer portal. Uh, then you're at Michigan. I I got that as a loss. So I think the SMU game's kind of a fifty fifty. At Michigan, loss. Michigan State. I would favor Michigan State there. I would favor Purdue at Indiana as a win. 
Northwestern winnable. Um, I just see five and seven when I look at this. So I, I, I think if anything, and that's with they giving do have them, a, they do have a tough schedule at the end there, starting at Wisconsin, at Penn State, Ohio State at home, Rutgers at home. But yeah. Rutgers at home again, that's winnable. Northwestern, I think they can win at Indiana. I think they're alive there. Purdue at home. I think they're alive. Michigan State. I think they're alive. So I I think getting to five is not too crazy for tests of this team. Buffalo Bulls. Well, well five's the number. So the question is is do I feel more comfortable? Four or six. Yeah, with four or six. Six. And to me, I'm like okay, Buffalo. I'll give you Buffalo, Charlotte, Indiana. And even Rutgers as four flat wins, but I, I'm not even. I don't even feel comfortable with that because it's I, at Indiana. And I haven't home to heard Rutgers. you guys once say that Loxley's going to shit the bed in one of these games. Like the, they're going to lose a game they shouldn't. Yeah, SMU is going to be. They're going to drop a game they shouldn't probably early in the season. I kind of like the idea of them dropping that Charlotte game just for no goddamn be. reason. I mean, Charlotte uh, what, crept up and beat Duke last year. I mean, Duke and Maryland aren't on that far apart levels. I also think they could steal a game, but uh, that that all being said, I I'm with you. I don't I think 6 6 is unrealistic. So, I'll take the under. Finally you guys disagree are on something. The Terps are crazy. A fade Loxley. It's in the book. It's in the black book. It's true. All right, before we uh, get to some of the rest of these win totals, got to shout out Coors Light, baby. Oh, so so cold, so delicious. I'm I'm out here in Colorado going to Coors Field tomorrow. You know I'm going to be cracking open some ice cold Coors Light. Perfect when you need a moment to chill. I know Colby, he's always on. He's he's stressing out about USFL, some of the penalties they called, the fact that they uh, didn't play because of the lightning. I, he's stressed out. He needs the moment to chill. And when Colby or myself need a moment to chill, you know we choose Coors Light. It's literally made to chill, cold packaged, cold filtered, and cold lagered. I'll be honest, it, it, everything about it is just ice cold and refreshing. You feel like you're in the Rockies as soon as you grab that first sip. And best part is you can get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash SGP. That's CoorsLight.com. Com slash SGP and remember to always celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Also, make sure you check out Sleeper. That's right. Kramer and I have our squads fired up over on Sleeper. Just go to sg.pn slash sleeper to join our squad. You probably already have Sleeper because you use it for your fantasy. I know we use it for our Dynasty League. The SGPN Dynasty League is on Sleeper. They got a brand new over under game. Again, yeah, I don't need to explain player props to you guys. You know, you know about taking overs and unders. Very easy to get going on the sleeper app and uh, you can win two X all the way up to 20 X, depending on how many uh, players you parlay together. It's, uh, totally fun. We just gave out some on the NBA show. Make sure you download the sleeper app and use the promo code SGP when playing the over under game. That's promo code SGP on the over under game for a what's this deposit match up to $100. That's right. Sleeper app promo code SGP terms and conditions apply. See sleepers terms of use for details. Nice work, Sean. Michigan State seven sixty to one to win the national championship. I mean, have, I'm curious to hear what Benedict Dant has to say um, with how much he hates the coach or hated the coach. I was actions. on the over last year, and that thing lo- I look like a genius with genius. that play, but. I think this year, look, you look back at last year, they had a lot of wins where they lost the yardage. Oh, uh, Colby, are you, are you about to use some advanced analytics the, and say the, regression what is, is coming? Is he they, Colby? Are you relying on another computer? You are the computer. <laughs> You're right though. Uh, Spartans are the worst pass defense in the big 10, allowing 337 passing yards per game. I mean, they're fortunate. They got away with uh, how many wins they ended up getting and you lose Kenneth Walker and three offensive line starters. They, it seems like the team that kind of exceeded expectations last year. That's not the same team coming back this year. Yeah. What do you I, think? I mean, you go through the, the, the schedule last year and yes, that was a nice performance against Northwestern out the gate. And, and all of a sudden we thought, Oh, but Northwestern was terrible. Uh, they got an FCS in Youngstown state. Then they're at the Miami game. I think that scores misleading. Also Derek King was not, uh, that's, that's where he missed an action there. Nebraska. They should have flat out lost that game. 
They should have flat out lost that game. I watched that game. Uh, they got very fortunate to win that game. Then you look a five point win at Indiana, a four point win against Michigan, where Michigan severely outgained them. Uh, the Penn State game, they cut, they win by three in East Lansing, and then the Pitt bowl game, they didn't play, they didn't have Kenny Pickett or their or their I think a corner and a D end, um, and they even had to battle back to get that win. Um, great season for them last year, but I do think they're it's lying to us a little bit when you look at this, uh, you, you know, the schedule they have. They're at Washington. Uh, at, a, at a conference, yeah. I expect them to lose that yeah. game. Um, and then you look, okay, they get PJ Fleck rowing that boat into to East Lansing right after that. I think that's a 50 50 game. Okay. Tanner, Tanner Morgan, Ibrahim are back for Minnesota. Yeah. I think Minnesota is going to be able to, 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 to hang around in that game. Wouldn't be surprised if they won that game at Maryland. I'll give it to Michigan State, but then home to Ohio State and home to Wisconsin. Those are two games that I, I mean, yes, could they beat Wisconsin? I think it's a 50 50 game. Um, at Michigan, that's a loss, and then it's a back-to-back away. So then at Illinois, after that, I think it's sneaky. No, um, it could be a letdown spot, but yeah, it is Illinois. I'm on the under. I yeah. I, I think I, I mean yes, smart move by by Mel Tucker to get Boise State off the schedule to add Akron, <laughs> right? Because they were supposed to play Boise State on September 10th. Worse. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I look at it. I see Western Michigan win, Akron win, Maryland win. Um, and then I think Rutgers in Indiana, and then even if they even if they upset someone after that, that'll put them at six. Eight's tough. And when you look at last year, seven or four and a half was the win total, right? Yeah. And they they really they overperformed, and I think you know you're seeing a reaction to that. And I, I think it, running backs uh, at some programs, it doesn't matter when they leave, like Alabama. But at some programs, like Kenneth Walker, won't just like be replaced. Uh, but they <laughs> they'll have some guys, but as Sean pointed out, they're the big big gap in returning offensive line uh, minutes as well. So Mel, Mel Tucker wins the transfer portal every year, though he brought in a Washington State transfer that started a lot of games, and then he brought in a former five star recruit by Wisconsin, Jalen Berger out of New Jersey, and then Jarek Broussard, who was with um, Mel Tucker at Colorado, who rushed for over a thousand yards, son of Steve Broussard from the Atlanta Falcons. That's great. I, I just think Kenneth Walker was was a different type of college running back, and, and I think that, like as you point out, on top of all of that, this this is regression coming. So when you're going to adjust the win total two and a half wins up uh, after a season where they they definitely outperformed uh, their wins, got to auto play the under here. Yeah. Although, I mean, I think they could also have a disappointing season and still be eight and four, but I, I I'm definitely, I, I'm, I'm with you guys on the under. I just think they, they lost kind of the heart and soul of that offense. And again, like they're, they're certainly prime for regression. So it seems like we're all on the uh, under seven. I mean, they're not going to win at Michigan, Wisconsin or Penn state, like Colby said. And so it's like, are they really going to run the table at, yeah, outside I mean, of that? No, I'll be honest. I wouldn't even, I mean, uh, I think they're going to lose at Washington. I think they're maybe oh, and, be at Wa- sorry yeah. at Washington. Yeah. Right? I think they're going to lose though. Kalen DeBauer, I think is a great coach and I'll have Washington ready to go. I was looking at the wrong schedule at Penn state at Michigan at Washington. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Moving on Penn state, the Nittany lions. Oh man. Eight is the win total. 60 to one is the national championship price. I don't know how anyone could be bullish on this team after ha- losing such a pivotal member of the staff, the <laughs> leadership committees, the mentors, of these young men, coach Pry now in Blacksburg. I don't know how Franklin is going to replace what he means to that locker room is the auto. It's just auto smash the under, right? No, I'm on the over. I'm on the over Ooh. here. Um, they have a big game, obviously uh, out the gate. I think is is a gigantic football game Thursday night, week one at Purdue, and Purdue is loaded. Aiden O'Connell's back, so um, that's a huge game. If they can get that win there, I really like their chances. Uh, they don't play back to back away games. Yep. Um, but they do play at Auburn. But Auburn, they might not even have a coach by that point. You know what I mean? Like, that, like Auburn's kind of like, I get it. That's a toxic place. It's always going to be a tough place to win. I don't care who's coaching, but if you were to tell Penn state that you're playing at Auburn, this and is you're the year give to do them, it. Yes. This is the year to this do is it. The year to do it. So, uh, you know, I got them starting out three and one. I think they're either going to lose to at Purdue or at Auburn, but I got them three and one. And then the, the Northwestern game, I think they can beat them, but Fitz Fitzgerald's always great. in it coming back from a bad year. Um, at Michigan would be the, 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 the one tough game that I, I can Off say, buy, but that's, you nice. get a buy before yep. that. 
Then you're home to Minnesota. That's sneaky because it's right before Ohio State, so maybe Fleck could get them. Um, but I mean, I, you got to love this schedule if you're them. You get Michigan State, Ohio State, and Minnesota all at home. Your only tough game that I really see is at I mean at Purdue and at Michigan in conference. You also catch Ohio State after they just played Iowa at home, and I guess the hope there is that Iowa like knocks them around a bit. Kind of a physical squad. I I don't. Doesn't this come down to what Sean Clifford does? I mean, he he looked pretty rough. Is he is he going to be their starter, Colby? He is. I mean, yeah, and, and uh, stealing my uh, point. I think one of the big things though is the offensive line has to be better. And, and, like They're by losing default. three starters from the O line. That's but, but that might be a blessing because yeah. they were terrible last year. Yeah. Um, so uh, I mean, if that if that gets better, obviously the defensive coordinator Brent Brent Price God in comes mm-hmm. Manny Diaz, the former Miami Hurricanes coach. <laughs> Um, that is a, a bit of a question mark, but that, but also Franklin's been recruiting at a really high level because of Coach Pry. No, and James Franklin is a good coach overall. I mean, seven and six mm. last year, kind of a down year for them. We haven't I, seen I like, him without Coach Pry at his side. <laughs> I think they're I think they're set up for a nice bounce back. Uh, Colby laid out a great case for their schedule as well. I mean, I'm certainly nervous about Clifford. Like that to me, he's trash. You have to be able to in the Big Ten now. You have to be able to throw the ball at least somewhat decently yeah. to to get wins. And he is the big question mark. I think this this win total at eight is probably right. If I'm if you can find a seven and a half when these actually open, I think you hammer it. But uh, you know, I'm not I'm not a guy who gives out lanes. I'm going to take Penn State over eight. But but I mean, I am worried about the quarterback. You look at the at the schedule last year. And they had a lot of close losses. They lose by three at Iowa. They lose in a nine overtime game to Illinois. Oh yeah. Um, and then they, I thought they played Ohio State fairly well. That score was a little bit misleading. And then even the Michigan game, they had a lead with like five minutes left in the fourth, and that they had a lead against Michigan State late in the, in the game. So I, I think you know you look at his track record too. James Franklin takeaway last year seven and six. The year before was that Big Ten COVID season where they decided to play football after everyone else was doing it. So that it, it, you got to throw that s- sample out because so many people m- Parsons and everything opted out. You go back before that, five uh, or sorry, four straight years of, of that would hit that over double digits. Yeah, yeah. I think he's going to hit that over again this year. I'm sorry. Hold yeah. on, guys. I take. I got a phone call here. What's that? Oh, hey, Coach Pry. <laughs> oh, I should take Penn State this year. They're they're loaded and ready to go. Got it. All right, Coach Pry telling me I should take the over on Penn State. Let's go, wow. Nittany Lions. Colby, we just uh, saw Kramer debut his first bit yeah, on the show, yeah. and he even right. had, he had some he had a prop and everything. <laughs> that was really impressive. Uh, it's not the first. I bit. Thought, Soy the, Boy's been where, around. Where's for the little coleslaw? While. You should have. You, you could only a, watch a the way. Coleslaw there. If you could only wait, watch the way that my youngest daughter watches me drink my AG one in my Soy oh. Boy character for no cameras in the morning. It's great. Well, Mich- right, perfect transition because we're talking about Athletic Ooh. Greens, aka G One. Ryan, sell the people on uh, AG One. Uh, all right, so here's the deal: if you if you if you like adaptogens uh, and and things that are green and plants and soy, you want to drink it. Uh, here's the key: I you, sometimes well, we're busy, we're grinding content. I don't have time to to eat some salads every day. Sean hates the salad place we go to, so sometimes we just don't get salads in a week. Every morning I wake up before the coffee, before the sun comes up, I throw that powder in, I shake it. It's funny. Now the dogs know that's also the sound of what <laughs> of getting fed. They hear that in the morning. They start losing their mind. Soy boys getting fed. The dogs are getting fed. Yeah, I don't know. Sean, you can pick it up from there, but I've enjoyed it. And and again, back to the taste, like it, it's, it's, sh- it's insanely uh, good tasting, I guess, compared to yeah, where I was at n- with it. Normally when you're eating uh, like a you know, powder kale or, or something, you're, you go, ah, oh, this is good for me, but it doesn't taste great. Uh, AG one tastes great and is good for you. It's very easy. Like Ryan says, you just get that shaker bottle going on in the morning. You're good to go. The athletic greens is over 7,000 five-star reviews helps you with the sleep quality and recovery. Athletic greens is going to give you a free one year supply of a immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash SGP. That is athleticgreens.com slash SGP to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Kramer coach Pry would be proud about your commitment to daily nutritional health. Thank and not you. Only, 
Well, and before you get to the not only, I, I will commit this. I, I am gonna put on social media a slow motion video of me shaking up the AG one tomorrow wow. morning. All right. Put That's a put at Kramer centric at, at gambling <laughs> podcast. That's it's going to be everywhere. It's going to be fire. Sorry. Continue. All right. soon. Look out, look out uh, some fresh content dropping. Not only are we committed to health, but I mean, you gotta, <clears throat> what about your data health? What about your privacy health? That's right. You're online. Who knows who could be looking at what you're up to. I mean, Colby's firing away on his laptop. I'm watching him right now. Who knows what sort of deviant activities he's up to, but we know we're protected because we use IP vanish in the studio. I also uh, took it on the road. I just filed my taxes online, sent the government uh, some money. You're welcome. IRS. And I was using Wi-Fi that wasn't secure. So I fired up the VPN IP vanish, nice, safe, and secure unlimited devices. Doesn't slow down your browsing. It's really, uh, I mean, if you need a VPN and you do, you got to go IP vanish 70% off their yearly plan, 30 day money back guarantee. Just go to IP vanish.com slash S G P IP vanish.com slash S G P. All right. <clears throat> now to the cream of the crop, old khakis himself, Jim Harbaugh on the boys, Michigan 10, Sleep sleepovers have been had. The recruiting class is nice. It has Harbaugh finally reached the mountaintop with this Michigan team. 30 to 1 to win the national championship. That feels like fool's gold to me. I I'm I'm never I'm looking at my board and I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm gonna be on a lot of unders in this conference because I I I, I just don't see is Michigan gonna run gonna, gonna run the table? No. But, no, but shout out to uh, whoever's doing things over there for that seven and a half win total last year. This is a big, big, big jump up. Can we talk about that aggressive at a conference schedule? Yeah, yeah cool. home to Colorado State, home to Hawaii, hmm? and home to Yukon. That that is just that which one are you great. most worried about? <laughs> Colorado State, probably because Norvell can coach, but he's in year one. That's his first game of his career in Fort Collins, but at the same time. Hawaii is a dumpster fire right now. UConn, our boy Jim Mora Jr. is, is doing some work, but I mean, I don't think week three they're going to be ready. But uh, I mean, at the same time, I know for sure that I think they're going to lose at Ohio State. The, the offensive yeah. defensive line play for for they lost a lot. Michigan lost a lot on both on both sides. I mean, they lost no, their Aiden. offensive coordinator, their defensive coordinator. I'm sorry, Sean, go. Yeah, no, I mean Aiden Hutchinson, he's going to be a tough guy to replace. Their own the defense is only returning three starters and your point too, new DC uh in Jesse Mintner and they lost their offensive coordinator Josh Gaddis as well. They did bring in UVA uh Victor Alumatimi at mm. center. Mm -hmm. So maybe that'll help with their offensive line. He's but good. It, did fe yeah. it, it feels like last year was kind of the perfect season, right? They finally got over that hump. They got to the playoffs. They got destroyed. Then Harbaugh spends the entire off season. You know, will I, won't I uh, go to the NFL? And then th it just is setting up for a pretty disappointing season right now. Well, I mean, but the schedule is nice. They only have what Very four, nice. four away yeah. games. And these are the away games. At Iowa, mm -hmm. at Indiana, at Rutgers, and then at Ohio State. Now, obviously, I'm going to circle that Ohio State game. I think they lose this year. They're going to well, lose to Iowa. I think the Iowa one. That's mm -hmm. always tough to go into Kinnick. Back to back um, road games too. That's at Iowa, at Indiana, right there. But, but the Penn State as well in a spot where they'll be looking ahead to that bye week. Um, the, you know, lots the, of sleepovers. But the question is, is like, can you find that third loss? And I, I think they kind of got the number right here. It's a push number. I kind of see them at ten and two. But I, I, you know what? With Penn State and Michigan State and Nebraska all being, I think, decent this year, maybe one of them bites them. Maybe one of them bites them. But but a lot of turnover in the defensive side of the ball. If the defense lets down a little bit. You know. It's tough though because that that is a I like Sean's an angle too. Like he, he was he was pussyfoot in the off season. He wasn't on one hundred and ten percent all in. No, yeah. he was a little distracted. I, I'm I like the under at ten. This feels like a nine and three team. Um, maybe even as as low as eight and four. It just feels like everything went right for Michigan last year until they got to the playoffs. But even getting into the playoffs, that was you know a huge accomplishment for the program. I I I mean. Would I rather take them at nine and three or or eleven and one? To me, it's no question. Give me the under. There are times when a, a coach hire will upgrade a program immediately because the previous coach was just completely incompetent. And as much as uh, Jim Mora, for for as much as we like to clown him, he, he's at least a like baseline competent 
head coach. I don't clown him. I think he's a good. And I think, and, and yeah. I think if, if we're gonna be in Vegas because that's NFL Week One, I believe September seventeenth. No, I think no, it's the Hawaii is it game. The tenth one. I think it'd be at the Hawaii. That that's Jimmy Chang. One, that's what the, Michigan drops that one. Under, no, easy. you're crazy. Under. I don't think it's easy. I think they're probably gonna go ten and two. But if I had to gun to my head there, I would go under. But they don't win. They, there's no way they're getting eleven. So I, I'd say that's a lock. Yeah, I mean, what would you rather have? Nine and three or eleven and one with this Michigan team? I mean, eleven going. and one is like a, a near perfect season for it's them. Insane. But I can make. I mean, I don't think Michigan State. Like, I I think Michigan was better than Michigan State last year. Maybe the Penn State game, but that yeah. schedule is not that brutal for them. Like, only four away games. I think the uh, if the, they get past Iowa on October first, I think you're scared of the of the, the, the over hitting. The Penn State Michigan win totals swing on their game against each other. If Penn State wins that game, they almost certainly go over. I'm going to say this: if, if Michigan, Michigan loses that game, they almost certainly go under. If Michigan beats Iowa Saturday, October first, the over hits. But I think they're going to lose it. Give me the under. Got it. We all agree. Once again, Ohio State eleven five to one to win the Natty. Uh, just just leaking first round receivers uh, directly and by way of Alabama. This team just reloads. They have the the be- I I would say like if I'm standing here right now as a complete uh, Bryce Hall denier, CJ Stroud, or what Bryce did, Young. What did I say? Bryce, Bryce Hall. Hall. Oh, yeah. I combined Brees Hall and Bryce Young. Uh, CJ Stroud probably in the best position to come in and absolutely shred next year. No reason to believe this Ohio State team won't won't be completely dominant. And then when you look at the schedule, Colby, which Wait, I'm sure did, did I say Bryce Stroud, huh? <laughs> CJ Stroud. Yes. No, no. Bryce young, CJ Stroud. Yes. Yes. You said it right. Don't worry. <laughs> and then when you look at the schedule and I know Colby, you're going to point out, they do have a back-to-back road spot, but this the only game pathetic, on this dude. schedule, they can lose in my mind. That's even close is oh, at, at Penn state. Yes. And for that reason, it's like I think I think they could run the table. I and mean, maybe I'm well, I'm overcompensating and, and to the fact that I have so many unders in the conference. But why why don't they run the table? I, I well saw, they lost they yeah. lost Alave and Wilson, but then they're bringing back uh, care, you yeah. know, Marvin Harrison Jr., <laughs> uh, Smith uh, in jo- in Jigba, and I don't know, man. Like and to your point, C.J. Stroud already has chemistry with these guys. They're just gonna pick up where they left off in that Rose Bowl. I know. Mm-hmm. Colby is probably still disgusted with all that offense in that game, but I don't, I don't see, I don't see how their offense isn't dominant this year. The schedule's favorable yeah. and uh, bringing in Jim Knowles, yes. the, uh, the Oklahoma state uh, guy uh, to coach their defense. <laughs> Number three in the country last season. Yeah, he's good. Uh, and they led the nation in sacks, the OK state defense. So if you're bringing in a more aggressive defense and uh, these teams are going to be playing from behind, I think Ohio state is just going to it's as chalky as it comes, but they're just going to put it on teams. I don't see two losses on this schedule. I completely agree. Getting Jim Knowles and also he brings in uh, with him from o- Oklahoma State is Tanner McAllister, a really good corner. Uh, he also brings in a linebacker from Arizona State that I think will will add up. Uh, you know, this defense it was horrible last year, but they have talent. So I think n- having someone that knows what they're going to do and have a good you know Knowles is, is proved that he's a very good defensive coordinator. I think that's going to be the difference. And then. Let's not forget. Okay, you're in the Big Ten East, which is tough, but you don't play a second away game until October fucking 29th. <laughs> know, that is pathetic. <laughs> all right, like so. Uh, I'm all yeah. Give me the over. I think they beat. I mean, what Notre Dame? We know this line's out already. It's at like 12. More I, than I think about it, the more that I'm gonna. When we're in Vegas next week for the draft, I think Sean, we should put a uh, a, a company investment on the Ohio State national championship right now because. I don't know when they lose and I don't know when the odds get better. They have a guy who's going to be a Heisman hopeful. They have, they're going to have tons of hype through the draft season. I, I just, the Penn, it, the Penn state games, their season, that's, but like, that's, 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 that's what's going to happen there. I don't know. Yeah. We'll have to shop for the line, but five to one. Uh, all right. I, I think maybe we, we make a little, we put a little chunk on that. Yeah. I mean, um, how does, yeah. Ohio state, you can almost, uh, at, at five to one, it feels like they're almost guaranteed to be in the college football playoff, and they're probably a favorite in round one. I mean, how do they not get to the college football playoff? Is really my question. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know that preseason 
here's what's hilarious. The preseason polls that I've seen have uh, Notre Dame as a top five team, but yet that line's at 12. So something doesn't make sense there, but um, uh, yeah. Notre Dame's not going to be good. Like we, we also don't know what this I like the Marcus Freeman higher, but I just think game one in Columbus. I know. I just think that, that, that a lot State of, a lot of heat, a lot of shit. He wasn't dealing with game week that he's now dealing with. So he it, not the easiest test for your first game. Yeah. Uh, agreed. Yeah. <laughs> So and, everyone's oh, sorry. The last thing I was going to say, and like Ohio state's insanely high in the returning production category as well. So it's uh 13th in defensive returning production. Yeah. This, I, I mean, the offense is what was shaky. CJ Stroud was the problem early in the year. He didn't have confidence. And it's like, it, Dude, it, he looked dialed in in the Rose bowl. That's what I'm and saying. If the, like, yeah. if the defense takes a step forward and the offense is humming, I mean, this this is this might be Ohio State's year to do it. Even though Bryce Young, who I think is a, I don't think is, I still don't think this dude's good. I, I think this is the year Bry- to take that on. Bryce Young, did I do it again? <laughs> no, Brees Hall, Bryce Young. Yeah, I'm saying Bryce Young in Alabama is oh, not good. CJ Stroud is the guy. Both are really Let's good. Let's take this national. I think championship. both are good, but yeah. if you had a if you if I had a pick on who I was th- who I think is gonna have a better shot at the Heisman, I would vote Stroud over Young. Colby, do you agree? I would not only that, I'd parlay it to Stroud goes over Young in the draft. I, mean, I think they're both neck and neck. I think both are uh, really good quarterbacks that could win the Heisman. I mean, I think they're both. Sure, I think uh, wow, Colby. Ohio State wow. schedule. Colby. Colby. Ohio State schedule is a little easier. So a give me, give me, give me, give me, uh, give me Stroud. Kramer, you got to remind Colby. He's not a he's not a tower in Italy. There's no leans. Both guys are are good uh, players. <laughs> Listen, he to likes this. watching them both play. <laughs> Alabama, Alabama two to one. Georgia three to one. Ohio State five to one to win the national championship. That's just not priced correctly. We're taking five to one. Yeah, we're gonna go for yeah. two. And we're gonna we're gonna get two futures, so we can sell one uh, before the season starts when they're down to three fifty. Yeah, that was for Sean. Five hundred feels like a crazy generous price, and oh. uh, yeah, get, get get a ticket over at PropSwap.com. Time for our locks. Our locks are brought to you by StableDuel.com. Horse racing DFS simplified. If you're like a lot of our listeners, you're Jones and for some more action, DFS horse racing is where you want to go. We got a ton of horse racing content coming at you on the network. You can win as much as fifteen thousand dollars with one entry. They gave away forty grand uh, the other day. Get in the app, create your account, start building your stable. Very easy to get it set up. They got free games. They of course got the paid games. That's where you can win the real big cash. Download now over at stableduel.com and see how many winners you can pick in your stable. And I'll see you in the winner's circle. Play, race, win. Stableduel.com. Yes, it is important for you to have a high speed internet pulled out, pull off that move, Sean, because the, uh, <laughs> it doesn't look quite look the same way if when you glitchy. All right. So are you going first or do I go first for college? I don't want to screw up the, the juju. I think I've been uh, going first. Right? Yeah, go first. Uh, all right. So let's, let's do a little bit of chalk with Ohio state. I just, I don't like, I honestly, I understand it's college football. I understand they probably lose a game and it's probably to Michigan state or something stupid like that. But I where's where are the where's the second loss for me to lose? So seems safe that the push is uh, alive. But I think they run the table. I, I would be also hunting for Ohio State to go twelve and zero props uh, if those pop up. Oh, what do you think you could get that at Kramer? <laughs> Not because it it's probably like I plus think one fifty. Well, I think they're I think it's more realistic that their win total is set at eleven and a half with some juice on the under, like a positive juice on the okay. under. So. I think they'll mess with you that way. And I think it's, you know, I think them to go undefeated is probably going to be a two to one, two to one. Yeah. Uh, But that's why the national championship bet is so nice. I only team I could see them being underdogs to is, is maybe Alabama. I don't think they're dogs to Georgia on a neutral second lock. uh, Coach Pry told me to take Penn state over. So we're going to lock up Penn state over eight wins as much as I wanted to shit on Michigan state or Maryland in that spot. I'll, I'll leave the unders for you guys. Uh, um. So it goes to Sean now, right? No, yeah, you can go second, Colby. Okay. You're lo- you're looking good. Sean's not here. Uh, he doesn't have control over oh, us right now. Okay. Well, uh, lock up Penn State over eight. That's that's no. my favorite play. Streams Coach Pry, colliding. Coach probably gave me an email. Mm. All right. 
Coach Pride doesn't use email. Are you kidding yeah. me? He's one of those guys <laughs> that has that a secretary guy? print out his electronic mail. He <laughs> hands writes all responses, signs them, sends a carrier pigeon back to his recruit. The way yeah. football was meant to be played. Amen. You think George Hallis responded actually, to any emails, Colby. Goddamn fun, right. Fun fact about Coach Pry: he can actually speak to animals. So that that story <laughs> makes a lot more sense than you know. Uh, including your little uh, what is what are those pan, like the, those pussy turkey things? What are those things? Oh, what are those war turkeys? turkeys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Sean knows. He's uh, been around. My second lock is Rutgers over three. Oh. Shiano, I got faith in Shiano. This this he, Goldie, I thought he won the transfer a, portal. Hold on, all right. Make a, I'm making a note. We need to get the Sopranos theme music for when we talk oh, about yeah. Rutgers going forward. <laughs> I don't know where we've been on that. Uh, too late. I mean, I was gonna take the Ohio State thing, but look, I grew up hating Ohio State. I mean, come on, I I can't. It's just I feel filthy with that. They're gonna hit that over on the it's eleven, be but fun. Rutgers over three. Let's have some fun, Sean. I did it last year with Kansas over yep. one. Maybe you're willing to come a little uh, further. Am. All right, let's go. I love That's Shiano. Plays the game the right way. Three is way too low for a guy who just gets these players. Uh, uh, he just shows up in random spots. He's gonna steal at least one or two games. Rutgers over three is my favorite. My favorite win total we've seen so far, honestly. And mm. then going back to Old Faithful, Michigan under ten. I know Harbaugh. Uh, you know, we've been auto fading Harbaugh for what feels like five, six years now. Yeah. But I, I think last year was the outlier. There's just so many things that can go wrong to get this team to two or three losses. So I'm I'm on the Michigan under. And we got to give out one under. I mean, come on, guys. Mm, do we? Uh no, I mean, I I uh I think the the play for it, under for me would be uh I'm gonna go Michigan State under. No, yeah. I just meant for one of our locks, one of us has to step uh, up to the plate oh, and take okay. an under. In, in fairness, I only took three overs. Uh, Rutgers was the other. And I would probably if you <laughs> asked me for a third lock, I'd lock up Rutgers just like <laughs> you guys did. All the overs, but yeah, a lot uh, I think this this conference is not gonna be as good as people think, and that's part of why Ohio State's gonna have a pretty easy road. Mm. The whole conference or the Big Ten East? Big Ten East, sorry, the okay, division. Okay. I mean, I think the Penn State game. I think Penn State is like a legit a legit team and, and everyone else is maybe just a pretender this year. Yeah. <laughs> pretender or contender. All right, Sean, we did it. Yes, we did. All right. Make sure you subscribe to the college football experience. Subscribe to the Sports Gambling Podcast if you haven't already. You just listened to a super early Big Ten East win totals pod. You're probably a hardcore DGen. Give us a nice uh, rating and review. We're uh, hooking people up with gear as always. Give us a follow on Twitter at Gambling Podcast. Kramer, hit the drop. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. USFL show tomorrow. Again, I was nine Ooh, and nice. three on uh, sides, <laughs> totals, and money lines. You're welcome, America. <laughs> For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean stacking the money green. He is Ryan. Sean, go Buckeyes. Kramer, let it ride.